Hi everybody, my name is Madison and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today we are here with my January wrap up. I haven't done a wrap up in a while, uh, so I apologize if you are new here and you're about to be in for a world of chaos. <laughs> I'm terrible at explaining books, so wrap-ups are just chaotic. So welcome, hi, hello. And I had a fantastic reading month in January. I read seven books. I had two DNFs, but I, but, 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 I read seven books and I had one five star and one 4.7 five star. So a pretty good reading month if I do say so myself. Behind me is the stack of books that I read. I have the two DNFs right here on the floor. So if you watched my TBR video for January and you're probably looking at this like, hey, hey, there's a couple of books here that are missing that was on your TBR. Yeah, they're the DNFs. They're the DNFs. Uh, but we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Uh, let's start off. Uh, we're going in order, okay? So let's just get on with book number one. Alrighty, so the first book I read in January, I actually finished on New Year's Day, and that is Kaiju number eight, volume six. I did not give this a rating. If I were to rate it, it would probably be like a three star rating. Uh, but I decided not to rate this because I am not enjoying this series anymore. And after finishing this volume, I decided that I would not be continuing on with the series. This is the first manga series that I gave five stars. And I gave, I think, volume one and volume two five. I think I maybe gave three, like a five or a four. But I I loved this manga series. It follows the main character Kafka who is on like this team who cleans up after kaiju um, that destroy Japan and he accidentally swallows a kaiju while cleaning them up and he becomes kaiju number eight. Um, and so this is like his story about him getting on to like the big kaiju killers and instead of being coming a cleaner and how he has to deal with being a kaiju killer while also being a kaiju. And I really loved the first three volumes of this manga series. And I didn't really like four and I didn't really like five and six is where I decided to call it quits. It is just not something that I am enjoying anymore. I feel like if I read them all back to back, I could find more enjoyment out of it, but I've had to wait for the volumes to be released. I am now two behind, uh, probably soon to be three, and I am just not enjoying this very much. So I am not giving this a rating, and I am not going to continue on with the series. But hey, first book. First book, we started the year off day one by finishing a book. The second book I finished in January was Orphan X by Greg Hurwitz. Now I actually started this at the tail end of December. I was in a reading slump. Nothing, nothing, nothing was uh, very good to me. And so on KU I was starting so many books, not even getting very far into them. And I stumbled upon this book on KU and I decided to pick it up. Then I lost my KU, and so I had to go get it from my library where I work, and you know what? I read it, I finished it, and I gave this a four-star rating. This is a, the first book in like an eight-book series, which I will not be continuing on with, despite the fact that I really enjoyed this book. I just don't really care about the other ones. This book follows the character named Evan Smoke, and as a child, he was brought into this government program called the Orphan Program. And this is where they take orphans and turn them into assassins. Evan was Orphan X, hence the title. And later on in life, he decided to get out of the Orphan Program and is now a, like, a, 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 a man for hire, a killer for hire, except he doesn't charge these people. Um, he helps somebody, tells them to, like, for like remember his phone number and give it to somebody else and then completely forget about him and never ever contact him again it's like a one time offer and this book you know it has that plot and it follows him as somebody is trying to kill 
Evan. And he's trying to figure out who it is. He's trying to avoid them. And anyway, I really enjoyed it. The reason I got a four instead of a five is because I found myself picking it up and reading it, being unable to put it down. But after I did put it down, forced myself to put it down to go to bed, I had a really, really hard time picking it back up, which is why I wasn't able to finish it in December because I didn't want to pick it back up. And I won't be reading these sequels because it feels so much like Alex Ryder. I read the entire Alex Ryder series back to back with my granny, and it was just like the same plot consistently just like Alex is older, you know, and with slightly different villains. And I have a feeling that is going to kind of be what this is about. I did love Evan as a character. I loved Evan with Maya and with Peter, and I really enjoyed, like, the action scenes. So, like, I enjoyed this. I even posted a review on Goodreads if you want to go and uh, read that. My Goodreads is in the description box. Uh, but four stars. I'm not mad about it. Glad to have read this because it was fun, but I'm not going to continue on. I have too many series that I'm reading right now and in the middle of to continue on with something like that. Alrighty, and then I read The Haunted School by R.L. Stein. This was a book that was purely for nostalgia. If you watch my TBR video, you'll see how I kind of like had this memory of the plot of this book and was like, is that a fever dream? Looked it up on Google. This book came up and I wanted to reread it and see, hey, is it what I remember? It was what I remember. It was a really, it wasn't actually, it was harder to read than I thought it was. I think it's because I'm a lot older now, and so trying to read this, I was just like, it's not, it's not connected. But I decided not to rate this as well, um, because it would have gotten a three, and it didn't really seem fair to me to give it a lower rating. Um, just because I'm older now, because I know when I was a child, I would have, like, given this, like, a five-star rating. Um, and I will say I did not like the ending. I will say that I am not a fan of the ending, but it was a three-star. Or, well, it was, it was a, it was a no rating, but it would have been a three-star if I rated it. Y'all are gonna need tea for this next one. So, I then went on to my first DNF. My first DNF of 2024. I talked about it very briefly in a YouTube short the night that I DNF'd it. I got a hundred pages, guys, a one hundo pages into this. I have a whole rant review on Goodreads, so I'm gonna try and keep it short. The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Adie. It's trash, you guys, you guys, this book is so stinking terrible like it is the, it is so bad it is possibly the worst book I've ever read in my entire life like the night I finished it it was the worst book I've ever read in my entire life but now that I'm done and I've not picked it up in like a month I'm like I'm so happy now that I, I now that I didn't have this piece of crap so Let's just say that this was like a booktube darling when it came out. It is supposed to be the YA version of Enemies to Lovers, the main character, like Shasha. I know in my Goodreads review I call her Shasha real smooth the entire time, but the main character, her name is Shahrazad. And she lives in a world where the king of the world marries a new woman every single night and then kills her before dawn. And so she decides to be the first person to volunteer to marry this guy after her sister was unwillingly forced into this marriage because she wants to kill this man. Now, the book starts out with her, she's married by page eight, okay? She is married to Khalidi, Khalidi, I called him, I called him Khalidi, I, call, I think I called him like, Khal, Khal, Khalid, Daddy, Khalid Daddy in my Goodreads review? I don't really know, I just, cause they're so stupid, so <laughs> they have stupid names in my Goodreads review, but, um, I don't even know where to start because my Goodreads review as I'm trying to talk about this book, everything I absolutely despise about this novel is coming back to me. So I guess first off, let's talk about the fact that you cannot have an enemies to lover and an insta-love story in the same, you cannot have them, you cannot have them because you cannot, 
You cannot convince me that this terrible main character despises this man and then have her love him like he, she loves him right after they're married like she doesn't even hate him she never despises this man even though we're supposed to believe that she despises him I think that just speaks so highly on Renee Adier's complete lack of ability to write a book. I mean, like, she has no talent. I never want to read a single thing from her again. I would use this as firewood in an apocalypse. I would burn this so quickly to make a s'more if offered the opportunity. I... <sighs> Like, the main character sucks, the male main character sucks. If you want us to, like, hate the main, the, like, the male main character, if you want us to feel that he is truly evil, do not have the prologue, y'all. The prologue of this book is all about why this, this, this evil person isn't actually all that evil. And, like, that's a terrible writing decision. We're supposed to feel hatred for this man. We're supposed to, as readers, want the main character to kill the man and then slowly have our minds changed as he starts say as he doesn't kill her, as he loves her, as he acts like this amazing, fantastic person. And I've read reviews about this book where he's not actually a good person, where he's like abusive and that there's essay in this book. I didn't get that far because I could not put up with it, y'all, because the, the whole thing is that he doesn't kill her after the first night. Do y'all want to know why he doesn't kill her? Because she starts telling the story, telling the story to him and drags it out for all the hours so that by dawn she still hasn't reached the conclusion of the story and she's like well if you want to hear how the story ends you just you can't kill me and I'll tell you tomorrow what what kind of idiocracy is that like she, and not to mention I would have killed her when she was telling the story because the story was so boring it's a stupid Aladdin ripoff that's what the story is it's Aladdin that's that's the story. That's the story. It's the story of Aladdin. But she tells it. You as a reader are forced to listen to and read this story for 20 pages. And then you get five pages of her being just an absolute fantastic archer. And then 20 more pages of her telling the same stupid story but never reaching the conclusion so she doesn't die. I would have killed her. I would have been like, girl, you're telling me the most boring story and you have the gall to think that this is going to keep you alive? You're dead. I'm murdering you. I would pull out my knife as the number one sword fighter in this world. I'd pull out my knife and i just <laughs> slice her up. She'd be dead. She would be dead and I would be happy and this book will be firewood. And that's my opinions on that piece of crap. I had such high hopes for that book too. And they it completely, none of them, none of them were hit. Uh, but yeah, go read my Goodreads review if you want, because I like it. Uh, so that was that book. So while I uh, DNF that one, my granny and I were reading The One by John Mars, and I give this a three-star rating. This is about like an alternate universe where there has where somebody has discovered the gene in your body that makes it to where you have one soulmate and that it can match you with this soulmate. And so this book follows like six different characters as they go on this experience trying to live, meet their soulmate, whatever and whatnot. You know, you know what I mean? It's very, it's very simplistic, but it's supposed to be like a thriller, a mystery of sorts, and I gave it a three star. <laughs> it needed more murder, okay? Like, it needed more murder. One of the characters in here, the best character in here, is Christopher, a serial killer. And tell me why you have a serial killer in your book, and there's like no blood. There's like no blood. Okay, I guess I can't say that, that there isn't any blood, because like the opening chapter of him he's stepping over like the neck that's been severed and like bleeding out <laughs> that's like in his opening introduction chapter but I just didn't I wanted more of Christopher in this book and I wanted more murder I did like the ending for a couple of characters like which who is this one Mandy Mandy 
yeah, I liked the ending for Mandy, um, and I was very surprised with Christopher's ending, and those were like the only two parts of the story that I actually cared about, was Mandy and Christopher, they had the most interesting, I don't even, I think I just skim read Nick's, I was like, I could care less about this man, I don't care, um, but yeah, three stars, I gave it a three, and my granny read it with me, Oh, I gave it a 3.25. I'm sorry. I don't do, like, point star ratings very often. So, a 3.25. It was going to be a 3, and the ending made up for it for me. And I guess my granny gave it a 3.5. I didn't mark it on my Goodreads, so. So, after reading the one, I tried to read the other book that we pulled from my TBR jar in my January TBR video, and that is Wrath of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. And as you guys just heard me say, I tried. I tried. I have tried reading this. This was the third time I tried to read this and get into it, and I DNF'd it. I officially, it was like a soft DNF for years, but this time it's a hard DNF. I am not going to pick this back up, which really sucks because I have the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition. Um, but I hate the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition. I hate this cover. Why is it red? Why is it red? It should be white or black or any other color than the same color that the other thing is. It's I hate this cover so much, but um, I DNF'd this, and I just could not get into this book. Um, I actually have, on Goodreads, I wrote down what finally made me do it this time, because I have tried to read this, like I said, two other times before. I think I got like 80 pages into this book the second time. No, the first time I tried to read it, I got 80 pages. The second time, I think I got the same. And this time, I DNF'd after page 10. And I DNF'd because one of the lines is where, like, he is... God is being, God's name is being used in vain so many times in this book. And when I'm reading books and they say that, I just like, my mind autocorrects it to gosh, and it autocorrects it to gosh in TV shows and stuff like that. But in this book, it is kind of, it's a French book and it's kind of based on like, Christianity of some sort because like they are religious but then they're constantly cussing and cursing God's name and I just could not do it. This book is supposed to be like this high fantasy, obviously high fantasy, vampire book where the main character he was captured and now he's telling his story to this other character and a lot of be, let him die it's supposed to be really good. But I hate, I don't like it. I don't hate it. I can't say I hate this book because I hate The Wrath and the Dawn, and I do, I don't, I don't, I do not have a strong opinion towards this book as I do for Wrath and the Dawn, but I did not like this. I'm so sad that I, oh, I have this, and it was $30 at Barnes. Like, I'm so disappointed, but this was not very good. This was not very good, I say. Thankfully, after DNFing that piece of crap, I did finish with my granny Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. Once again, another book that was on my TBR. This is a copy I picked up from my library uh, donation, so now I have a copy of it. And that proves how much I enjoyed it because after finishing it, I wanted to go and pick up my own copy of this book so that I could have it my entire life. Um, and maybe one of my kids will read it one day. I'm not sure, but this book is a time loop Groundhog Day situation. It follows the main character, Jen, basic white girl name, and she, at the start of this book, witnesses her son murder somebody, and she has no idea why it happened, and she goes to sleep, and when she wakes up, it is the day before her son was mur murdered somebody, and then she goes to sleep again, and it's three days before her son murdered somebody, and then four, and then five, and then two weeks before. So it is this book, and it constantly goes back in time every time she sleeps, and every time she goes back in time, it's supposed to have something important as to why her son murdered somebody. And I gave this a four star. I did really enjoy it. I was very, very, very intrigued. I was like, what is the twist? I heard that the plot twist at the end was fantastic. I was like, I need to know what the twist is in this book. And I didn't, I mean, I liked it. Like the twist, I liked it. But the way it ended, I did not like. 
I can't say, I can literally cannot tell you what, what, how it, like, I can't tell you how it ends. I cannot tell you what took it from a five to a four for me because it's a giant spoiler. It's like a cliffhanger at the end of the book, but I did not like it. It left me very unsatisfied. Like, like time loop stories are going to probably be pretty unsatisfactory when it comes to the ending, but y'all... I did not like this ending. I did not like this ending because it never, <sighs> I can't even talk about it. But I also have one more complaint about this book. It is the fact that the author is an American, right? She's not American. So tell me why she felt the need to shove her foot into the door of American politics. And the thing is, it's not even important to the story. It is a one two sentence throw away, throw away line that is shoved into this book for no other reason than to tell us Gillian McAllister's personal political opinions. On a, like, and I understand that like politics, worldwide politics, it's very important for your country to know the politics of other countries, but like it did not need to be in this book. And I'm sorry, it was really stupid too. I just have to say that. And then the final two books I read in January were fantastic reads, y'all. So I then read Lost in Translation by Miriam Grossman. This was a this is a nonfiction book written by Miriam Grossman, who is a child psychiatrist. And this book is so so like it is such a hard read it is about the dun, 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 the black plague issue and especially the children collecting the black plague you know what i mean you know what i'm trying to say here youtube don't demonetize me don't block me whatever um but that is what this book is about and it is so fantastic i want to own a copy of this so that i can reread it several times so that i can reread it now at my age and annotate it and get all of this fantastic information out of it and then I want to reread it in the future before I have my first kid and do the same thing and to gather the information in a different way than how I would gather it now because I'll be having a child that could potentially be a, one of these statistics. I would hope not. I hope by the time I have a kid this issue is like non-existent anymore like we've learned from our mistakes we're out of the test subject stage you know what I mean but this book was so good I gave it a five star rating and I loved it so much and it's so weird to say that I loved this book because this book is so it is such a heavy dark topic I mean it is about the black plague you guys so it deals with really dark and disgusting things but I could not put it down I started this book thinking I'm gonna read one chapter a night so that by the end of January I will have it done that I so I will finally be able to mark this book as complete and I could not put it down I could not put this beautiful book down. I loved it so, so much. And the way Miriam Grossman tells the readers about this, it is nonfiction and it is nonfiction told in a nonfiction way. But I read it and it made me feel as if I was reading one of my fiction fantasy books. The stuff in here is not fiction, but the way I was able to just sit down and binge it unbelievable and I think that this is a very important book for people to read even if you support the black plague on children and the black plague, plague issue in general I think everybody whether you are for or against this topic needs to read this book because it talks about stuff statistics issues terrible medical problems that the government that the doctors themselves that YouTube will refuse to have go out in the world, that they are hiding and that they do not want people to know about. And I think that is why this is so important for people who, who what, even if you support it, I do think this is something you need to read so that you can get the full scope of what you are supporting. 
and so I gave this five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to reread this book and annotate it and actually be able to quote directly from it because I can say stuff that was in this book but to directly pull lines like quote it word for word I cannot do after one read but I hope after two and annotating I will be able to do that. So that was a five star rating. And the next book I read was The Crowns Game by Evelyn Skye, and I gave this a 4.75, and I rarely give 4.5 star ratings, so to give something a 4.75 star rating is insane. But I loved this book. I love this book. I have wanted to read this book since 2017. I think that's the year it came out or whatever whatever year it came out. I've wanted to read it since then and everybody who read it was like, yeah, this is a basic fantasy book. I want you all to know that I read Children of Blood and Bone and that was a basic fantasy book that y'all claimed was the best thing you've ever read. That was a basic fantasy book with black characters. Okay, that's all that piece of crap was. This was really well done. Maybe it was a little bit basic, but I thoroughly enjoyed the Russian and French influence in this book. Evelyn Skye, her writing style might not be the most skilled thing in the world, but it's definitely better than The Wrath and the Dawn, that piece of, that piece of crap. But this book follows two characters. It follows Vika and it follows Nikolai, who are soon to be Russian enchanters. But at the start of this book, they have no idea that the other one exists. And so, uh, about a couple, couple chapters into this book, they are told that to become the enchanter to the crown, they will have to compete in the crown's game, which is this competition to prove to the magic of Russia that they have more power, that they can do better things, and that's why they should be chosen. And the thing is, whoever isn't chosen is killed by the magic. And these two characters, um, they grow to like each other and, like, be friends. And so to kind of, like, read this book, like, on the edge of your seat the entire time, wondering, these two characters, they like each other. They're friends. So who is going to die and I truly enjoyed this book it was so easy for me to read I was reading like a hundred a hundred uh 15 20 pages in an hour and it was just not put down a, I could not put it down I had to get like 30 50 pages into it before I couldn't put it down but then I could not put it down and I really really loved this book and I'm so happy that I finally finally read it that the stupid people on the internet did not influence my opinion of this book and I am really excited to dive into the sequel it's actually the first book I'm like reading in February I'm reading it in tandem with one of the books off of my TBR of February so I really liked this. I'm so happy that I read this. If you haven't read this and you want to give it a try, I totally recommend it. It is so beautiful. The magic is so, it's just so fun. And like, I did not expect the competition to be as sensical, as magical as it was and to find it as entertaining as I was because it wasn't like a bloodbath competition. But I did. I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to read the sequel and hopefully I will read Evelyn Skye's other duology as well and love that one. Ugh. But there we are. This is the seven books and the two DNFs I did in January. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit long. Okay, maybe not a little bit, a lot long, but hey, it has me. I can't shut my mouth. And yeah, I'm going to go eat dinner. I can smell the nacho cheese wafting up into my bedroom. And tell me what the best book you read in January was, or tell me anything else you want to tell me in the comment section. I will see you guys all next week for another video. Adios, au revoir, salut, hey du, and goodbye.